yeah, we can we can go ahead and get started. I'm sure a couple of people are going to trickle in, but um, but yeah, I am so glad to see everyone here. Some I recognize some names and some I don't. Um, so welcome if you're from the OSU CCBBI community, but also welcome if you're from the um, Worldwide Neuro or the On Neuro community. Um, we're certainly glad to have you here. Um, and this is the um, first part of our three-part um, MATLAB lecture series um, taught by Dr. Jean Grey Lee. Um, and just um, to kind of set set the tone, so to speak, um, uh, Jean Grey has indicated that um, he would love for you to interject verbally. So I think everyone by default is muted and their video is stopped, but feel free if you have a question throughout the talk, um, rather than using the chat function, just go ahead and interject. Um, and then if you'd like to wait until the end, that's completely fine as well. Um, we can address questions at that point. Um, and the session uh, will be recorded um, and available online on the On Neuro uh, um, YouTube page um, in a little while. Um, and so we'll go ahead and post the link to that um, YouTube repository um, in the chat in case you guys are interested in looking at this series later, but also um, looking at other series that we have available. Um, so uh, without further ado, let me um, introduce um, Dr. Lee. So um, Dr. Jean Grey Lee is the um, Ohio State CCBVI Facilities Specialist, aka the jack of all trades for our imaging facility. And he received his PhD in neuroscience from USTC China and has been at Ohio State for um, over nine years now. So um, please join me in welcoming um, Jean Grey. I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Alison, for nice words. Uh, so I'm glad there are so many people today. And uh, so let's get started. So as the uh, slide shows, uh, I'm planning three series for the MAT lab in, uh, in our imaging studies. And the first one is the very basic one, just to talk something randomly about MAT lab. So, uh, MATLAB is one of the computer languages, and, but it's definitely is not a, a popular, very popular one. Popular ones are like a general one, like a C, Python, you heard a lot about that. But MATLAB is one of the languages used in the uh, scientific field, uh, together with R and Fortune. And for others, there are Java or JavaScript, uh, we are not going to mention those. and. Uh, uh, for MATLAB, because we are talking about MATLAB, is it good or bad? We are using it, we are talking about it. So the good thing is that uh, the MATLAB can import uh, Python method. For example, you have Python functions, it can be easily called directly from MATLAB. If you found, ah, oh, Python is much easier in some context, we could do that. Same thing for Java, and I think now, uh, Java is kind of a, uh, because the uh, Oracle, some kind of a license issue, uh, MathWork and the company for, to make MATLAB is trying to uh, avoid using Java in their new uh, MATLAB release. Uh, but for now, it's still completely compatible. So we can call almost a, a lot of Java method if that's useful. <laughs> But probably that's something we need to avoid gradually in the future because of the Oracle license issue. Uh, so one thing I already talked to uh, uh, Paul when we, we were chatting is, uh, uh, personally, I have very poor pr computer programming background. But if any of, one, any of you have better computer background, that's good. If you are not like me, no worry. We can still learn a computer language. Uh, when, if we learn computer language, the purpose is not, ah, oh, we're going to teach computer language, no. It's just to meet our needs. So whatever we want to do, if I need it, I will use certain computer language, something like a math lab. So there's a reason, uh, next slide, we will sh show you the why, why we choose math lab, what's the problem in the math. 
but don't let let that scares of oh I have very poor computer grammar. That's exactly the case for me. But I'm not boasting. But I I uh, now I wrote a lot of MATLAB uh, code, and one of them is uh, uh, we are going to uh, use is uh, the Nifty tool that's used by a lot of people in the uh, a, a lot of people around the world in the imaging community. So I, I uh, showed Paul, uh, Paul one of my uh, t-shirt, I have a math work. <laughs> That's uh, the kind of award, not because of a nifty tool, because something else. It's kind of, a, uh, they recognize a little piece of code that's useful, so they, uh, they should ship me a t-shirt. <laughs> okay, I'm glad for that. So uh, here's a list of uh, uh, popular computer languages, as we can see, where's MATLAB? It's number 20, <laughs> and it's uh, going down. The ra ranking, ranking is uh, going down, and you can see the rating is uh, pretty low. But why are we choosing it? It's not, a, not that popular. You can Java, C, Python, they are the number three, uh, first number three. But there's a reason to choose MATLAB, it's because it's, uh, 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 we will see later. So, but first, let, let me briefly say something bad about MATLAB. Why is it uh, rate, rated as number 20, not number one or two? The, the, the major thing is I think um, serious programmers, they don't consider MATLAB as a programming language. They think it's a piece of junk. Uh, from that point of view, maybe that's right. And the major cons uh, danger is the namespace. Uh, because MATLAB function uh, like a, a lot of like, uh, functions, a, you can define anything. You can, we can, everyone can define their own function. MATLAB talk about a lot of functions. It's open to everyone and any, at any time. In that sense, people said, no, that's not a computer language. Because for example, if I have a uh, function called sum, uh, the purpose of a sum is like, computer the sum of them, some numbers. Okay, that's a, indeed, that's a MATLAB function. But if, how about if someone, if like me, I write a function called name that has sum, what happens there? So that will be a problem. So uh, like other languages like Python is mainly object oriented program that will solve the namespace issue much better. MATLAB is, uh, has that kind of a trend to go to uh, OOP, but it, its design was not that way. But I think they realized the limitation. Uh, as the fun number of functions grow, it's getting more and more a problem for the na uh, function names. The other major problem like MATLAB is this cost. It's not free. And uh, some, uh, sometimes, could be very expensive. For us, the good thing is uh, uh, most universities provide the MATLAB license, including major uh, common toolboxes. That's a nice thing for us. And uh, uh, even uh, if you don't have ac that access, you can buy a student version. It's, that's pretty uh, affordable, something like uh, $100, close to that range. But in the, uh, in the end, if you really like MATLAB, I, actually, I don't think that a strong reason for that. You can use Octave as an uh, alternative. So Octave is free. They simulate a lot of things in MATLAB. But as you can imagine, if it's uh, as powerful as MATLAB, MATLAB will die. It's definitely not as powerful as MATLAB. That's why a lot of people are paying MathWorks for, for the MATLAB. And the other uh, uh, problem is the performance. It's kind of a trade-off. MATLAB, the major advantage, as we can see on the next screen, is some convenience. But because of the convenience, we trade off the frequent, uh, trade off the performance. And uh, oftentimes, if you compare to C, it's pretty too slow. MATLAB is too slow. The good thing is uh, if that's the problem for most time it's not a problem but in case that's a major bottleneck then we can uh, implement some major part of the code in C or Fortran then can 
those can be easily compiled into format lab to use. Uh, for us, there's probably most of, most of the time we don't need this. And uh, uh, oftentimes we are doing some imaging study like, ah, oh, I have 20 participants. Once, uh, once I do one of them, all of them are similar. So then we will use some uh, parallel computing toolbox to do them parallel overnight. So in that case, I think this is more popular than the, uh, to, to improve the performance than uh, the uh, compiling in C or uh, Fortran. So, so many things about MATLAB, but why are we using it? Why are we talking about it? So I think uh, uh, previous I talked about the major problem people hate that uh, it, about MATLAB is its namespace. It's too liberal. So it exposes everything to uh, everyone. So, but just because of that reason, people like it. It's a bad thing, people, something becomes a good thing. So because that be makes things much easier to get uh, to start it. So uh, especially it's very popular in universities. A lot of uni major universities have the university license provided to their uh, employees. I think that's the one of the major reasons. The other major reasons are rapid development. If you want, we want to do something in C, it will be a nightmare. Even you have a, a strong background, a programming background, it will take a long time. In my lab, you just give it a try, try something, keep, keep trying, trying, then it's done. Uh, then in the end, the performance is not as good as C, but the development pace is very fast. Maybe we can do it in one day, in C, maybe you, you can you need to do a week. So in the end, the performance is not that critical. So uh, also, as I mentioned, if it is a thing, we will use some parallel computing or something like that to uh, improve the performance. And uh, uh, later MATLAB versions for, uh, make the debug tool very powerful. So uh, uh, I think uh, I, I did some C programming, but MATLAB is much easier compared to C. So if you, we start to test something in C, it's a, it's a no starter. But we, uh, later uh, we will start with something pretty pretending. We don't know anything about uh, uh, Siemens uh, Paul Sox data, we will just take a look and make some guess in my lab. So, so you will see how easy it is to realize the data, to plot the data, to do some reasonable guess. For sure, science, not we can't do science by guess, but when we figure out something, guess is a ni nice start. And the uh, great advantage of MATLAB is the flex uh, flexibility and the convenience. And, uh, uh, if you, uh, you are familiar with the C language, you, you know there's a concept called pointers that uh, confuse a lot of people. In my lab, there's no concept of pointers, but it works everything like pointers. That sounds confusing, but you don't have to know that. So it's just uh, they treat the pointer, treat everything as a pointer, but what happens? Why does C do that? because of performance. So they sacrifice some performance for make, make uh, so easy use for us. We don't need to, uh, we won't confuse pointers and no, uh, regular variables. They are the same thing in my lab. That's why we don't have that concept. But at some point, we need to know that for the performance, from the performance point of view. The other thing is the, Duality, uh, that's a lot of people, even some uh, familiar MATLAB user may not know that. So uh, let me give you a brief example. Where's my MATLAB? Oh, here. Uh, that means the input to, mat, to a MATLAB function can have uh, both forms. For example, uh, let me see, uh, Uh, let me see, uh, the DIR is a MATLAB function to show the, uh, show the files in the current directory. 
if I want to just show the uh, some M files, I will I can do something like uh, that will just show MATLAB files with something called M. You can see a lot. Of these these are the MATLAB dot uh, M files under the current MATLAB directory. So the other way is we do something like this. You see, they are the same, yes. So did you notice the difference? Here is just a, some text. Here I quoted it together. That's a MATLAB character. So, but the second form allow us to this. Now it won't show this, but just a return a, a, a real structure. So if I look at the first part of the, uh, oh, it's going on. You can see the uh, one of the files is something like that. So the duality means uh, it's uh, it's something we can uh, use either either as a oh how to restore that okay uh, we can input either as a uh, like we do on a system command line or in a quoted string. So uh, but that's only for character for numbers. We can't do that. Uh, we don't have the both way. So we talk about some good things, something bad thing about MATLAB, but whatever it is, somehow we like it. Some people like it. So then uh, to uh, install MATLAB, I mean, you, you can go download there. Anyone can download from the, I think, uh, I think anyone can download, maybe not. In the lock in something like a, so I have a, I have a account so it's sponsored by university, and uh, uh, whenever I lock in, it will show me oh what li university license your university has. So when you download which version, typically the version MATLAB version is not critical, but for now. Uh, if your MATLAB version is uh, older than 2016B, I strongly recommend you download the latest version. So because since uh, 2016B, there's some major changes in MATLAB. So oftentimes, obviously, always improve things, make changes to things, but it's minor, it's a, a one affecting. But since 2016B, that's a huge one. We, uh, we mentioned something later. And the license is a university license or student where uh, after you install the MATLAB, you will have a license to use it. And uh, every year, if we are using MATLAB, uh, university license, we have to renew the license every year, just to quickly renew it. Uh, no question asked uh, if we are renewing from the university computers. And uh, MATLAB is just a basic part. So, uh, uh, the uh, a lot of functions are completed by the toolboxes in MATLAB. Uh, what kind of toolbox we need? That depends on what we are going to do. And uh, uh, a lot of the toolboxes are very expensive. That's why the university, even the university, won't buy all of them. They, they just buy a couple of them popular for our uh, 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 university users. And oftentimes we use some uh, uh, toolboxes from third parties. 99% uh, of the time they are free. That's good. So uh, one thing is uh, uh, the MATLAB is the easier part is that all MATLAB thing and toolboxes, well, uh, toolbox, they already add all the path for us. MATLAB already did that for us. That exposed all the functions to every users. That's a great feature, and as I mentioned earlier, that's a very dangerous behavior. And uh, uh, to avoid to uh, make don't make the, to avoid make the thing even worse, we if it's for example if the a toolbox from a third party, we don't use that often, then we don't save path. We just add a path when we start MATLAB. 
in that case, if I start MATLAB the other day, I don't want, I won't use that function, then those functions won't be available for me. The major concern is if there's a name conflict, it won't pose problems. The other day, one of our users asked me, uh, uh, she was using the uh, DICOM nifty tool uh, I uh, developed. She asked me why it gave me an error. It's simply because of uh, exactly this issue. It's a function name conflict. So MATLAB has some functions, people, every people, everyone are using it. And some people don't know it, so they don't use it. And some people develop another toolbox. They don't know that name, they use the same name. Once you add the path, it will overshadow the MATLAB function. That's the really bad thing for MATLAB. And that of, oftentimes, if you are not experienced in MATLAB, it can, why it's simply not work? I don't know why. It's, yeah, that's a, that's the major problem for MATLAB, the namespace that I mentioned earlier. That's why if you can avoid add path for your session, unless you, you use it every day, you don't save the path, just add a path each time. That, that's equivalent to something like uh, in Python, you import a, a, a package each time. Uh, in Python, you have to import every time. So uh, the, it makes it safer, but it's really annoying. But it's all trade-off. And if we are, you are, we are using something our own, today I'm working on this, then I will make a, make, uh, put my code in one of the uh, folders. Then we will change the current directory to that folder. So start in that folder. Then we don't need to add path of that folder to the MATLAB path. Because if your computer is used by multiple people, everyone add their uh, own folder to the path, uh, MATLAB path. Uh, for example, I have a function called a sum that that's a disaster. Then MATLAB function sum is not available anymore. It depends on who adds the latest. The latest one overshadow all the previous one. That's the uh, design. So that's a major MATLAB problem. But if we know that, we can try to, we can't solve that problem, but we can, uh, if we know that, realize that, we can make that less worse. Uh, okay, here's uh, some, uh, 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 something about MATLAB components. Uh, there are major, pro uh, there are a lot, but I'm going to briefly mention some of them. Like a command window, that's like a system, uh, terminal or uh, uh, command shell. And uh, that's often, most of the time, we are type things there. And uh, where is my MATLAB? Yeah, here, that's the uh, MATLAB command window. Uh, actually, I turned off the, this kind of thing to make it a larger, but the default ones like this, you will see a lot of uh, uh, icons there uh, to make use because I, Personally, I'm, I don't like those, so I just hide them. But you can click that to show them uh, different different tabs. So the uh, uh, command window is quite useful. Uh, it, uh, there's a command history. Where's that? Uh, because I don't use that often. Uh, I'll use my way. Uh, for example, I just uh, type a uh, clear command window. I want to type, type again, I just type the up error key. It will show up those uh, command that re I typed recently. Like uh, I showed you the duality of the MATLAB command. That's the string, that's the quoted uh, string. So uh, that's the command history there. So yeah, there's a window to show the, all the history. So I'm, I don't like that window occupies a lot of uh, uh, show command history action. Uh, yeah, you can search. Uh, like uh, I did something NFT. Yeah, then it will show a lot of things. That's uh, that's very convenient. You just uh, press up, down arrow keys. It will uh, it will give us the uh, the command we just uh, typed recently. So you don't have to type uh, all of them over again. And uh, in the command window, uh, oh, other components like uh, 
um, editor. This MATLAB editor, that's the most the two important part, that's the code. So this is a piece of code I'm going to show you next time for the uh, stimulus presentation using Cycle Toolbox. This is one of the code, demo code I'm going to use. Uh, different code like the, all this. And the others like a file browser, something like here. Yeah, that's a current file and you can go to other folders. That's not very useful because we have a file processor in our operating systems. But uh, as sometimes it could be useful. And a workspace, where is it? Here, it's a workspace. Uh, it's the empty. I'm going to do something A equal to one. Uh, A, A equal to one. If I do this, You see, we have uh, two variables. One is A, value is one. The other is the answer is a struct. So that's the variables in the current workspace. Uh, that is very useful during the test. And uh, uh, the other one is uh, like the uh, 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 variable viewer. Uh, that's uh, very uh, convenient for you. For example, uh, What's the struct for the answer? I'm going to, to be safe, I'm going to call it, uh, B equal to answer because answer is a MATLAB default. And now I'm going to open B and uh, that's the uh, variable editor. We can view the uh, contact of the struct, name, folder, name is this. The folders here, that's the, for the file information. And we, you could also possibly to change something and, uh, if you need. So uh, that's the major command. I'll, I'll go to the, uh, uh, the command window. Where's the command? Yeah, here's the command. And the command window can also you, can be used as a convenient uh, calculator. So for example, uh, you can do something like uh, one plus two uh, times three, whatever, or sign something as, as a really a very convenient uh, calculator. Remember the, the MATLAB re returns the uh, result into answer. And uh, so that this variable is get overwritten every time whenever we, we run something on the command line. So that's why like previous I do B saved equal to answer. If I want to keep this one, then will B is this number. Because if we do something else, answer will be overwritten. And the command history, I just show you uh, how convenient it is. And the other uh, feature is uh, like the, a lot of a uh, system command uh, for example, if I'm going to do uh, nifty tool, uh, do I need to type all the, the full name? No, you just uh, type a couple of uh, letters, then click tab. It will show you a lot of the functions start with an IIA underscore. So like the nifty, uh, where's the view? Oh, here. Like this one, if we start it, we'll show some print pictures like this. So uh, that's a very convenient tool. So um, you, you don't ha have to uh, remember the whole name, especially if it's too long. And it's recommended to use a longer name because, because of a potential name conflict. And uh, another feature is uh, the, in the command window, we can do the line by line code testing. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to show you this in a, uh, later in the example. That's really convenient. Uh, another feature is uh, it's really flexible. Uh, for example, uh, if I have a uh, if I have a do I have an image file? Let me go pictures. Yeah, I have a lot of pictures, like uh, this I will call you. I can drag this file into my lab command window, you will see what happens. 
it automatically identify R oh, as an image file. And if I ask you, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to just load into uh, a variable name called image something like that. But you can change this to something else. I'm going to change it to image, just to make the name shorter. So once we do here, you must go to workspace, you see an image. That dimension is uh, 3,000 something by 3,000 something by three. That's the, the picture of the our head coil. So you can see how convenient it is. You just drag something. That's the picture. You can drag a lot of files, like MATLAB files, audio files. It will find the right program to load into MATLAB for your use. The other way is uh, personally, I really like use like, like, uh, like a uh, operating system terminal. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I'm going to use uh, uh, Windows IP config. Uh, some people may be familiar with that. That's to check the uh, computer uh, IP, a lot of things. The only thing you need to do is uh, get an explanation mark there. It will run system command. It's not a MATLAB command. That will exactly show you it's the equivalent that you took from a command line you run this. But command line is really dumb. If you want, I want to copy this, uh, see how easy it is here, copy. But in command line, it's a, it's a pain. So personally, I almost do every command line from MATLAB command window. You don't have to do it, but that's my personal preference. And some common commands, you already used to come of them, like a who uh, will show the list of this, the who's is more useful, not only show a list, but show what, what are they. Like the image we just allowed is a 8-bit unsigned integer, and the dimension is this. The three, as you can guess, is RGB, the color image of our head coil. And I already type CLC, clear command, clear command window. So I'll make that clear. And the clear is uh, what happens. Uh, who's clear? Who's again? Nothing. Clear, just uh, clear the variable in the work, current workspace. Open, just open a variable like a, uh, I just opened the struct B now, but now it's a gun. I clear it. Uh, uh, a DIR is the same thing, same thing as the system DIR. Well, this one is MATLAB function. This one is the operating system command. Uh, like they kind of diff they are different. So although they all list files, uh, some some uh, uh, common command. So uh, we will use frequently. And the editor uh, is a lot of things like. Uh, uh, we, that's where we write our code. It's pretty uh, uh, convenient. And it's a text editor with, with a MATLAB. I don't need the uh, Windows Notepad anymore because it's a MATLAB editor can do everything and much more. And uh, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the uh, label something, for example, if I click four, it will find out what's the end for the four, uh, a lot of things, uh, the color, different colors, and uh, uh, also some auto compilation. For example, for if I want to a nifty tool uh, tab, remember here, tab uh, applies here. It will only one, it will just fill for you. If it's not enough, it will give you an option. Same thing as in my, uh, command window, uh, the auto compilation. And the other powerful part is uh, the code analyzer. Where is it? Ah, uh, it is here. Yeah, it's green, that's fine. But if I get rid of a comma here, huh? there's a warning here. Oh, line 14 is tell, uh, uh, tells us uh, terminate statement with a semicolon to suppress output. 
Okay. So MATLAB every time we typically terminate with a, a semicolon, unless you want MATLAB to display the result from this line. So that's some, uh, some warning here. So typically we don't do that. But during a test, we may do that. That's a code analyzer. Uh, uh, sometimes I give you a suggestion. Oh, you have a way to improve your code. Uh, that's a really nice feature. It's not. It's available since uh, recent MATLAB. Now, uh, it been, has been a couple of years, but it's not very. It's pretty new. And uh, uh, what if we don't want to uh, write a whole piece of code? Make sure it works. We can do a line by line test. For example, this one we can do a line by line. Copy this one and copy, paste into command line to write. Or even simpler, right click or F9 will write. We can conveniently to do it uh, line by line. And you, we can also uh, drag and drop open text file into the editor. So uh, we will do that later. So here's some basics. And uh, I will need to spend a little bit of time on this, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, MATLAB, uh, MIT is matrix. It's very powerful. It's a very important feature for MATLAB. It's a very convenient and super fast for uh, the matrix computation. Why I said MATLAB performance is bad, but this part mainly, the major part is uh, some uh, state-based uh, max file. That's a similar speed as a state language. So the uh, law part is a matrix multiplication division. That's some matrix concept. Uh, Maybe confusing with the number multiplication, but we will uh, go that one, especially for the third seminar for the uh, nifty those are all we all deal with the matrix and i'm going to uh, spend a lot of time to do the uh, indexing uh, matlab indexing is a little bit confusing but it's pretty convenient it's very convenient for example if i do like a a that's a bad habit to call something a but just to be fast magic three as this gives up so the it's a MATLAB function uh, as a, a magic square. So as we can see, this is a three by three matrix. We will say it's a three by three double uh, double precision. So how the MATLAB store this variable? MATLAB simply store the variable A as nine numbers. And uh, for variable A, it re uh, remembers A is a three by three, not nine by one or one by nine. So it simply uh, say uh, number. So one important thing is that MATLAB is one based, not zero based, like Python, C, a lot of other programs. So the other thing is that MATLAB is a row first and column second. What's that mean? So let's see. And uh, if I do A11, one, one, what's the result? What's A11? One, one? A11 one, one, one should be 8. Yeah. What's A12? So the first index is the rows, second one is the columns. So, so A12 is this guy. It's 1, not 3. Okay. Uh, if I do three, three, that's easy, okay? That's two. That's this guy. That's how index in a matrix in MATLAB. Uh, now, question. What's A1? You can imagine it's eight. That's right. What's A2? One or three? It's three because my lab always is a row first. So what's a four? It's one, two, three, four. Okay, that's how my lab stores the nine numbers. The a nine is two. 
what is A10? A10 is an error. Okay. <laughs> no, A has only nine elements. So that's the, uh, how the index is, the uh, MATLAB index works. So that index is like one, two, three, four. Subscript is like two, three, two, three, that's seven. Okay, uh, the other one is the logical indexing. It's, uh, it's very useful uh, for the image analysis. Uh, that's why I need to introduce that, although it's not a major MATLAB concept. So for example, uh, in, uh, this is a one through nine, nine numbers. Uh, if I do a greater than five, I will call it B. Uh, I, I get a three by three matrix, same as A, but with the ones in location, A is greater than five, like here, 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 right? So that is a logical array. So what if I want to get all the numbers greater than five from A? I will just do a simple, a good way is I can find B. Oh, I know in B, first six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those four number, four thing in B is greater than five. Okay, I can just do A answer. That's a bad habit. I got all those four numbers from A, which are greater than five. But if we do this in my lab uh, editor, you will want us. You have a better way to do this. The better way to do this is as simple as A, A, I'm so sorry. As simple as that. A, a greater than five. So we don't need to find one, six, seven, eight. We know A greater five is this guy. You simply use this as the index. It's called a logical index because it's a logical array. It's either zero or one or true or false. So you can skip this step. Although this makes it even easier to understand, but it punishes us for performance, okay? Uh, that's the logical index, and we will use that uh, for uh, often, very often for the image analysis. And uh, when you want to get help, there's a couple of things. Help, DIR will show you the what's a DIR the function do. It will give you help. That's not very user friendly. If you use a documentation, DIR, it will give you a very uh, nice, interface and here nice thing you can go here all the way what are related functions C also so I also mentioned C also here that's why oh maybe the DR is not what you should use you should use something else better to for your job if you go to uh, Google search probably it will give you something exactly as this at MATLAB uh, website. So uh, help documented doc is the popular one. Okay, the other concept is uh, function versus script. Uh, both are MATLAB uh, co collection of code. Uh, script is sub simply line by line of a code and it's convenient for testing. And uh, the major difference from uh, functions uh, uh, all variables are in workspace. Uh, for example, uh, if, show you the command window, here's a function. Script is if we simply delete the function definition, that becomes a, street, a script. Uh, once we run a script, everything is in the workspace. Or uh, workspace is the command window here. If we run, run all the variables will show here. That's good and bad. During testing, it's good. During real experiment, it's bad. 
And uh, that, that means the script doesn't return anything, or you can say it returns everything. So function, if, uh, if we uh, do a function like this, it uses its own workspace. So this way we avoid variable name conflict because uh, if we have a same variable name in workspace and in function, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. They won't interrupt each other. And a function also enables the code analyzer and speed op optimization. And uh, the uh, major uh, advantage of a script is the line by line test, but function with the uh, debugging tool is make it much easier. You just uh, click uh, on a line here. When you run function, it will stop at here. You can let the code run line by line. It's very easy. So that's why I recommend that even you don't want to uh, return something, you still use function rather than uh, uh, script. So here's some, uh, uh, some example to use uh, MATLAB. So we will cover that in the one is the imaging study for the Nifty analysis, the other is the uh, stimulus presentation. So here I'm going to uh, start the uh, example uh, in my lab as the, to show you something I just mentioned. Uh, for example, this uh, I'm going to uh, find, uh, pick any of the pause file, drag that into my editor because it's a text file. And we can say, ah, this is the text file, ECG, pause, something. That's uh, from Siemens scanner. It's the, uh, it's the uh, uh, something, the pause oximeter is uh, locked into a uh, text file. And uh, look, the first line, the file is pretty large, it's nine megabyte, and mainly in the first line. Some second line, other remaining lines are just the information. That's what our guess. So that's why, so I'm going to randomly uh, copy some numbers here. to explore the, this file and copy. And, oops, I think I got too much. And uh, said war me probably is a, something out of memory, something like that. I think this should be fine. I'm going to paste what I copied here, assign that to a variable. What, what I did is this, uh, put the same column that paste into the bracket. So let's see what's A. Oh, so many. Uh, it has a of almost 90,000 uh, thing. Uh, I want to do I don't want that much. Let's make it a smaller. I'm going to do one through 10,000. Only first 10,000. What's that? Let's plot it. So it's a plot. It will show us the, uh, what these numbers. Huh, ah, that looks familiar, right? So those are Paul Soxes. What are those kind of things? Weird thing. Let's uh, click the explore. What's this number? 5,000. What's this one? 5,000? 5,000? Oh, those are 5,000. What are those things? If we uh, enlarge the graph, the plot, ah, we can see 
at a certain phase of our uh, ECG, basically uh, something like that, every cycle, right? So based on guess, we know that's not real data. That's something uh, fake. Actually, that's Siemens. That's the way the Siemens detect the uh, ECG cycle. Uh, and never at that phase, it will generate a special number. So, uh, because that's a fake, I'm going to get rid of it. What this does is uh, uh, whatever a greater than 4,000, that's arbitrary number. Exactly, it should be 4,092, I guess. It really doesn't matter. Uh, this way, we, I will get rid of all the uh, five uh, five thousand. If I plot it again, look, all those things are gone, right? So these are real ECG data. Okay, that's something you can you can see how easy to plot to check the data. So uh, that's a way uh, the way to check it. So the other example I'm going to show you quickly is the, uh, the uh, general linear model. So for example, here we have uh, two equations. Uh, let's call it A, one, two, three, four, B, five, and 11. What's X? Two X, two values. And we can just do A equal to this. Uh, Uh, a equal to one, two, three, four. Uh, semicolon means next, uh, next uh, uh, row. Uh, B equal to five, eleven. So. If we want to solve the linear equation, all we to do is as, as simple as this, that's the x, or we can assign that to x. So x1 is one, x2 is two. That's the way to solve the equation, linear equation. That's a, a very popular in our imaging study, so-called general linear model. Basically, it's the same concept. But if we want to uh, compare, if, what's the b? difference between B uh, and A times X. There are zeros. So that's why we know we have two equations, we have two variables, uh, we are sure we have one and only one solution for X. That's one and two. But in a real uh, image analysis, we often have more equations than variables. What happens when that? That's one when we talk about the general linear model. So for example, y, let's say number of TRs by, for arguments, let's say one, only one voxels, because all voxels are independent. We can treat them one by one. And that's the, uh, our measurement from the scanner. X is number of TRs by predictors. That's how we want to, what result we want to get. And beta is the previous X, we want to get the solution. Uh, that's number of predictors by one, if we have only one voxels. So then the solution is, uh, if we call the beta as a B, a little bit confused from previous equation, then it's as simple as it is. That's the, the uh, general linear model. In that case, we have how many equations do we have? We have a number of TRs equations, oftentimes hundreds. But how many variables do we have? Often a couple of them. If we add some nuisance regressor, like a, uh, a motion artifact, that will be 20 something, or 15, something like that. But it's much less than number of TRs. In that case, what's the solution? The solution is to, uh, to minimize the variance of the residue. The residue is the difference between the solution and the original data. In our previous case, 
uh, we saw the residual was zero because it's explained the result perfectly. In our real data, that's never the case. So we try to minimize the variance of a residue to get our solution for the beta. And if you look at this, that's the, if, is this a beta significantly different from zero? That's often the image study, all image studies doing. So we will do the uh, standard deviation of the residue. Here it looks compli uh, complicated. It's just a single number. It's a constant term to do the normalization. So it's simply the beta divided by standard deviation of the residue. That's the key. Okay, so this is so easy. All of this, even we have uh, something like 40,000 uh, voxels, they all of this will take something like less a second to compute. You can see how, how easy it is in math. So the last example, I'm going to show you uh, something like a line by line, uh, as I mentioned a couple of times, is we can do a, we can compute a, a correlation map of a data set. I guess I did something before. I'm going to use the uh, some command line. Uh, that's a command, a command history. So I'm going to, yes, I, look, I use tab. It will give you, oh, that's, that's the resting data set I want to show you. Uh, don't worry about this. We will mention this in the third nifty tool. And this is basically load a nifty uh, data set after pre-processing. The image is 88 by 20, 78 by 44 slices by 138 TRs. That's our one of our real data set after pre-processing in FSL. Okay, so load first step, load the pre-processed data. Then, because in my lab, everything we want to deal with is uh, something like a 2D, not 4D data. In this case, it's uh, X, Y, Z, and T, time. So we want the data to be in time versus voxels. So it is uh, so easy in my lab. Uh, I'm uh, cheating because I did this before. It's a reshape my lab function. And I, I dot image, that's the image of the, the mat matrix. I'm going, this is 138. That's the fourth dimension. So if I do this, you will say what's Y. Basically this reshape in the two dimension. Second dimension is this one comp, uh, combined every, all th first three dimension into one dimension. That's uh, this guy. Eight, uh, 88 times 70 times 44. Then we have, but that's not what we, we want. We want the other way. Uh, it's a simple transpose. We add the transpose. This is the other way. That's the uh, format that we want. Number of point by voxels. These are so many voxels. We put them all into one dimension, okay? So, uh, Uh, let's define, quickly define a, a region of interest. Uh, I'm going to load. Uh, uh, load uh, the subject's uh, structural image. Amperage. That's the uh, brain for the same subject. Uh, I'm going to, let's add the uh, pro, pre, uh, processed data. That's the, the, this picture that's Y. Y is in two dimension, but this is in four dimension. So uh, I'm going to define a popular region. This point, what structure is that? PCC, that's a one of the famous default network. I'm going to get the uh, 
time series uh, uh, use the radius of uh, six millimeter around that uh, uh, around the cursor of uh, uh, the crosshair. Uh, it gave me this plot. That's the mean time series around six millimeter diameter. So I'm going to use this as the as the PCC equal to tab. I will show you why data. So what's PCC? Okay, get okay. PCC is a 138 by one. That's basically this plot, all the numbers over here. Uh, the average of uh, the time series here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to correlate every voxel to the PCC, to this time series. That's a PCC, computer mean PCC, uh, time course. Ah, me, that's not right. I don't think we need to do this. No, we don't need this. Computer correlation of a uh, uh, each voxel to PCC, yeah? So now if I want to correlation between PCC and uh, 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 every other voxel, what I do is this. Uh, so easy. Why is uh, this, by this PCC, so the first dimension must be the C. So after this, C should be matrix one by this. or this by one, doesn't matter. Okay, this is a one correlation value for each voxel on the X, Y, Z, all of this, one for each of them. Uh, that's a correlation to the PCC. So uh, let's do a quick, oh, but uh, to visualize the result, uh, I'm going to do this equal to this. So we know this guy is a four dimension. I'm going to use only the first time point. So now if we check the NIS structure, I already reduced it to one uh, three dimension. So I'm going to uh, put all the correlation value into this image. That simple as that. So that is a kind of a special to uh, let the toolbox uh, uh, update the dimension because I changed the dimension from four dimension to three. So now let's overlay the, our correlation uh, result. Uh, if we do uh, overlay, add overlay, yeah, because the, uh, now it's not original data, it's a correlation uh, matrix. So uh, I'm going to change the correct color or change both dimension. Uh, it's crazy. So I'm going to change the threshold because the threshold is too low. Uh, let's change to 0.1. Ah, uh, still too low. Point three is pretty good. This is kind of arbitrary. So, uh, and uh, make it look prettier, I'm going to interpolate it based on to the high resolution. Ah, uh, still too messy. Let's increase to point four. Okay, here we see something. That's a very bright spot. Because why is bright? Because it's correlated to itself, right? And the other spot, you see, look familiar, right? Default mode network, right? One subject, one round, we can see it clearly. The, here, the, the point I'm showing here is it's so easy in my lab to do this. But the other e either easy things we can do in the command window, what the command line, one, line by line, we did it. We put, copy them into the, editor, save that as a function. Then next round, we run again, another subject is done. 
so easy. Okay, uh, I think I run a little bit over time, so that's all about it, right? Yeah, any questions? Yeah, everyone can unmute. Questions, comments? It's so quiet. <laughs> Thank you, Shangri. Ah, you're I think welcome. people are just shy to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> They're so blown away by the comprehensiveness. Oh, someone wants the link to the knee viewer. Oh, uh, that's, uh, uh, I, uh, I think it's in the, uh, let me send you the, uh, my PowerPoint so uh, people can share it. And I think it's in the, oh, not this one. This one's a basic, the third one. Uh, actually, it's a, uh, if uh, uh, you go to uh, Diacom to NFT, uh, you will see uh, that's the by Chris Warden. Uh, what is mine? Oh, here. No, no, that's not mine. It's a, uh, if you do my lab, and I think, yeah, here it is. Ah, uh, no, that's not mine. That's a, uh, uh, yeah, here is uh, with my name here. Yeah, uh, don't use this one. This one is really bad. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of problems. Do you yeah. mind showing the link to the chat? Hey, where's my chat? Where's my chat window? Mm. Oh, is yeah. it under the more like that? Yeah, more. Dot? Come on. I just sent it, Jean Gris. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Hina. No problem. Okay. Oh, thank you, Hina. Um. So yeah, I want to be mindful of people's time. Um. So maybe we should <laughs> sign off, but just really briefly, would you mind um, describing what will be covered in the next um, workshop? Oh, uh, the, I'm planning two more. One is, next one is uh, more practical. It's um, just uh, how to use the cycle toolbox to uh, uh, program the stimulus. Uh, so before that one, I, I'm going to email you uh, uh, MATLAB code, uh, uh, serve as a demo. So as I mentioned, don't be scared uh, by coding. The coding is really not that hard. If you start from scratch, it is super hard. If you start from a demo, it will be very easy. So we don't want to, like today, it's by no means it's a systematic uh, MATLAB uh, knowledge. It's just from some practical tips. So I'm not good for uh, basic MATLAB lectures, but I, I can tell you, you start with a demo, it, it works perfect for us. That's all we need. We don't want to, be, want to become a programmer. We want to become a user to, to solve our problems. So next time is the use the demo code to uh, do some uh, uh, programming stimulus. If, oh, by the way, if someone, you are, you are developing an uh, experiment, let me know if it's a, it's a general one. If it's a too special, we may not cover. If it's a general one, we could do it during another lecture. That will be more real, right? If someone happens have to, uh, is developing a study and, uh, or there's, there's a paper, we can start with the paper, just do the same thing as the paper. That's the second one. Third one is uh, about some, uh, uh, how to use the uh, NFT thing. 
uh, we, uh, we uh, use some NFT thing today, uh, but uh, today is just to show you how easy it is, but we didn't get anything about NFT because all our files, image files are in NFT format, almost everyone, except Brain Voyager. And uh, so it could be very useful. Uh, could be, uh, uh, there's something very easy to go wrong. Uh, so uh, I'm going to measure some some practical thing. What can be go wrong, or something? Uh, thing, or what what kind of a custom analysis we can do? Yeah, a lot of things can be do from existing toolbox. But if we have, I have a special idea. It's not covered in toolbox. How do we do that in my lab? It's just, my lab make that super easy. Yeah, that's uh, one stimulus. The other is nifty related. Can I ask a quick question? Um, do you need a toolbox to view the MRI um, structural images on, on MATLAB? Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why uh, people ask me for the uh, uh, diagram to NIFTY converter. That, that uh, toolbox has both the diagram to NIFTY conversion tool and the, like the NI tool I just used is a part of that. The NIFTY viewer is part of that. So everything's uh, there. Uh, the other one is a popular one, uh, uh, SPM, that's MATLAB based. Uh, but the viewer there is not that mm, uh, easy to use, and, but it's, it's built into SPM. Cool, thank you. There was one other question that was just posted in the chat by Holly Spence. So she oh. says, um, thank you so much for your talk. I'm starting a study using QSM for magnetic susceptibility mapping, if that will be covered. Oh, that's not my expertise. I remember one of our physicist candidate uh, was uh, is an expert on that. Uh, but the, uh, what I'm doing here is a, some general MATLAB thing. And uh, uh, it, I guess the, in the end, the QSM thing is something uh, is still it, it, uh, fall into the NFT format, so I'm I can cover that. But for the thing specific to QSM, uh, I have to admit I'm not expert on that. Great, well, if there are no other questions, uh, maybe we can wrap up this session and we look forward to seeing all of you um, next week for the second session. Thank you, thanks everyone. Thanks, Sean Green, it was really